Please welcome to the blue corner for your next fight, Brian James. What do you have to lose? You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. That's going to be a great amateur title fight there, Alex. I'm really looking forward to that one. June 11th. Be sure to be there at that one. That one will be fireworks. Yeah, I mean, that's it really, both guys are such good wrestlers and submission artists, man. That's going to be a fun fight to watch. All right, our next fight, we have Brian, Brian James making his way out in the blue corner right now. He's 3-0. and All three of his fights have happened here in our Fury cage. His last fight against Gavin Cisneros. He had a unanimous victory there. And he had two split decision victories before that. One against Joe Hendershot, which I know you're familiar with. Oh, yeah. That's so uh, he's got plenty of cage time for sure. He's been in there three full fights. We'll see if he can pick up his first finish this afternoon. Yeah, Brian James has done really well for himself. He's been undefeated. Like you said, a lot of cage time. Um, he's got a unique build for the weight class. He's, he's tall and, and muscular. And uh, every fight, it seems like he's become a little, for, a little more familiar with like what, what his strengths and his style is. He seems fired up right now. Can't wait to watch him fight. All right, well, let's take it into Wayne to meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Jose Mejias. Jose been making his way out to the red corner. He's carrying an undefeated record as well. He's 2-0. and Himself also coming off two split decision victories, so a little bit of cage time for him as well. But, you know, both these fighters, I'm sure, really wanting and, and, and urging to try to pick up a finish. You know, obviously, you of all people will know, anytime you step in that cage, you're wanting to pick that finish up, whether knockout or submission victory. So I know uh, we should have a, a pretty exciting fight on our hands here with both these guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, 3-0 versus 2-0. This is, you know, as, as fun as it gets from a prospect standpoint. I was, I was interested to see this one. You know, I got a, a few featherweight amateurs on my team as well, so it's always kind of fun to watch the competition. And that both these guys, you know, seem disciplined, seem technical. Another really fun fight. Props to the matchmaker. Yeah, the matchmakers at Fury never cease to amaze. You know, they, they put some of, whether it's debut fighters or whether it's a couple 1-0 or 2-0 fighters, all the way into our, you know, experienced pros, they really put some stacked cards together. So, all right, well, we'll, we'll go inside and uh, let's get our official introductions from Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by OnlyFans is scheduled for three rounds of the Fury Amateur Series Featherweight Division. Introducing your first competitor, fighting out of the blue corner. Representing Nats level, he stands six feet, one inch tall, and weighted officially at 145.6 pounds. Fighting out of Long Island, New York, he holds an undefeated amateur record of three wins, no losses, this is Brian, the Hitman James. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Representing Blitz MMA, he stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at a perfect 145 pounds. Fighting out of Waco, Texas, he too is undefeated as an amateur, holding a record of two wins. No losses, this is Jose Yoshi Mejia! Your referee in charge of the action, Steve Armstrong. All right, these fighters are ready. Steve Armstrong giving him the last instructions. Touch of gloves and we're right underway. James opens up with a straight left into a knee, into a clinch. Quickly into this clinch, firing knees off. So it's, it's, it's good to be aggressive. Oh, that's gonna be a quick Looks timeout. Looks like we're gonna get a timeout there. They came out so quick and aggressive, they worked the side panel <laughs> off of the cage here. We're going to get that put back up very quickly. One thing I love that, I mean, instantly there were four four guys in the mix stopping it. It's because, like, you know, where, where things get dangerous is when that metal's exposed. Absolutely. Like, that fight was stopped, I mean, before those pads even hit the ground. This, yeah. is, so, this is so much more important than, than the average fan would think, too. Yeah, got to make sure that everything is secured properly. 
obviously it's there like, was a lot of force on that velcro any seam. time <laughs> i ever train at any gym it, I, I if there's like a cage or like a wall with some like you know steel and, and chain link i will inspect it up and down if there's any yes, exposed sir. metal I'll, i will either not train there or i'll be like hey if we're close to this corner you know cease all activity you know you get picked up in double leg you land funny on something steel and it's it's game over yeah you're against the cage clenching your foot kind of gets in that crack a little bit there's some fence sticking up you never know things like that can and you know potentially will happen we see you know they, there's a lot of force. They both <laughs> ran into that, and they're you like, saw whoa, whoa. James is like, hey, man, what you, what you do that for? Well, no, I'm good. just kidding. Nice little <laughs> – you see Brian James keeping the same energy. All right. Looks like we are for real underway this time. Good work on the Fury crew for handling Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Very quick split. and promptly. Yes, sir. We're back underway. Okay, we'll go to this side of the cage instead. Yeah. So one thing about Brian James, you know, he's got some interesting, unique attributes. He's six foot one and a southpaw. That's two awkward attributes to have to train for and deal with. Yeah, those long, lanky lefties, man. Very awkward angles, very weird distances you have to deal with. Everything comes at you from a different angle from southpaw anyway, but with that type of distance can be very effective. Yeah, I just did a full six-week fight camp against a six-foot-two southpaw, and, man, I'll tell you, I found my training partners, and I got my reps <laughs> in. I felt so comfortable come fight time. You and have brother, to. It paid off, obviously. Oh, man. And I can't, we can't congratulate you enough. You know, your first uh, public here appearance appearance on the commentator booth since then so heck yeah i appreciate cool it cool to see you right back in the mix oh man mma is what we do watch the fights last night here watching the yes, fights sir. today live i'd have it no other way and we got a bunch of good fights you know still have two amateur titles coming up later we saw one of our uh, future amateur titles being set up just moments ago so two more of those on the plate for this evening but these fellas right here putting in some work against the cage heavy clinch position Looking for the dump here is Jose, and he does seem to get it on yeah. top now. Just a classic little body lock, Reaper-style trip. You know, same side leg trip. You see the right leg of, um, of Jose still around Brian James's leg that he tripped. He's not quite an amount. One thing he could do here is leg lace. I don't know if he's familiar with the technique. That's a Damian Maya. Really crafty guard pass into mount. I actually learned it by watching him do it in the UFC. But, uh, but all the same, I mean, Jose's on top. He's still got the body lock. You can always tell the intricacies of a good grappler by what they do with their lower half. Like I knew some guys who trained with Craig Jones and they were like, man, his legs were so active doing the weirdest of things. Yeah, they say his, his feet are like hands. Yeah, it's like blocking ankles, yep. blocking knees, stopping recoveries. One thing I think was they could phase into mount, slide that right leg up. But you see how he's really controlling the hips. When you go to mount, you more control you know, the abdomen. So the guy's hips are free to bridge. Right now, Brian James cannot bridge. Now, Brian did start the round fast. He landed two big left hands, landed some knees. Now, granted, he got taken down, but Brian has won some decisions from his strike attempts. Ten seconds left in the round here. Referee going to stand this fight up, not liking what he's seeing there on the ground. And here we go. That was a little weird, but cool. And that's it. Oh. Good little excitement to end the first <laughs> round there. Referee said, I've had enough of this. Let's get him up I for mean, 10 seconds. I mean, it was like five seconds, and he was in near mount. I don't know if I'd have stood him up from there. And I'm all for a stand-up, my friend. Don't get me wrong. I love I love some fisticuffs, but. So, nonetheless, interesting way to get this fight going here. Both these fighters settled in, got their game going. A little bit of back and forth, some grappling situations. A lot of clinch work, guys trying to stay against the cage, switching positions, you see. So knees from James being landed here. Very effective early on. This is before we had our little mishap, I believe. Yeah, right our, here. Our pad's going to come off. Yeah, just peeled that Velcro right <laughs> off. Got behind it for just a touch. But a lot of the fight went like this up until the end there. It was a lot of cage work. See, we talked about earlier head positioning would do James a little bit better in these scenarios. Yeah, you know, James definitely landed the better strikes as, you know, Jose got the takedown and had some top control time, but I don't think he landed a single strike on top yeah, or threatened to sub. Wasn't very or really advanced top. beyond, the, you know, the open guard. Granted, he was almost, but still. Honestly, I think that's a Brian James round. You can see amongst five fights between these guys, there's been four split decisions. Yeah, so you can see the, the, the urgency to finish is probably there, but maybe the mechanics in which to find that finish we're still working on. Obviously, you know, these guys still young in their amateur career, still building, have some fights, you know, both undefeated, but we're looking to see 
if uh, one of these guys is going to do something significant enough to either find a finish or sway it one way dramatically to the, in their favor. Right. It's one thing to have a style, but it's another thing to implement your style. And I think that's something both guys are still actively working on. Like, you can see, you know, Jose prefers the takedowns. You can see James prefers the striking, but they're kind of like crashing in and, and not really setting things up. And it makes for a lot of tie-ups. And like we saw with Jose, like maybe loving the takedown and being successful with the takedown, but then not knowing maybe per se what to do after getting the takedown. Right. right? Or, or, or even, you know, really setting it up. Now, now, one thing, James is doing a good job in these clinch, staying active with the knees and punches. And, you know, he is doing more than Jose. Yeah, he's got Jose's back against the cage, against the pads. I mean, both guys are pretty good-sized featherweights, not an ounce of fat on them. But, but I think their energy is kind of matching and they're just they're colliding a lot. I tell guys in striking MMA, I think of it like car crashes. I don't think about you know, striking and movement, I think about crashing in with punches. You know, and then evading, naturally, but you almost gotta like time collisions. Cause that's what it is. Yeah, you talk about the style, styles make fights. You hear people say that all the time. Sometimes when athletes have the same exact style that it kind of nullifies each other's exactly, skill set. Yeah. You have to resort to something else that maybe both of these fighters may not be as advanced or as developed in, and then you kind of get a nullification of certain positions that one fighter would particularly be successful in, but they both have that same skill set, per se. You see Jose able to switch the position around now with James. He's got his back against the cage, but... There's the turn once more. And this seems to be the merry-go-round of this second round we we're experiencing. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, I, every time I'm coaching my guys in the gym and they're, like, clinched up, punching the body, I'm like, stop punching the body. Like, you're wasting time. But honestly, this is one of the few times that strikes to the body, much like Usman versus um, Woodley in their first fight, it actually paid off, you know. Usman landed a lot of, you know, punches to the body in the clinch because the guys were clinched up the whole time. And, you know, and that's kind of like the deciding offensive factor. Like, Brian James is the only one really doing any offense in this fight. All right, you see Jose now in on a guillotine, but, I mean, there was no real palpability there. You see the referee there consistently asking for a little bit of urgency there in this position. So it's also, you never know what type of ref is going to ask for urgency, more action, or let you work in those positions, per se. Ten seconds left here in our second round. James landed some okay shoulder strikes. Yep. I mean... The strike count's got to be single digits for Jose and, you know, double for James. Absolutely, yeah. Just a lot more active, throwing more knees, throwing everything he can from any, any type of scenario, all those body shots against the cage like you were talking about. Just a, a lot more active. So it's still kind of playing the merry-go-round, the, the clinch against the cage. I, I got your back against the cage. You got my back against the cage type of scenario. You can see as that plays out right now in our replay. But... As we said, James a little more active in those scenarios, so I yeah. think he might have just a slight edge. But going into our, our final round here, anything can happen, we know. Like I said, I know that these guys don't want to go to another decision, especially <laughs> potentially a split yeah. decision. So, so we'll see if, if, if they get a little urgency in this third round. You know, and it could be 1-1 one, one going into the third. On my, on my very unofficial scorecards, I got James up too, just from, just from offensive like potential, just activity. But it, it could be 1-1 one, one going into the third. You know, Jose, other than that takedown in the first, has really not been able to do much. And, and, you know, there's still a lot of time to work. He could change that easily. Both fighters looking very fresh still here in this third round. James, very light on his feet. There's that, as you're talking about, that kind of collision that keeps happening right there, the chest-to-chest -chest yeah. meeting of each other with real no specified technique. And, and you saw Jose had really no interest in throwing at all. He just kind of shot with no setup, and that's why he's dealing with this big underhook from Brian James right now. Ooh, that was a good knee. We good heard solid that. Solid knee we right here in front one. of us. Once more, we find ourselves in the, the familiar position, that clinch grinding against the cage. Both of these gentlemen's backs probably going to be pretty chewed up by the end of this one. Oh, yeah. And, like, you know, despite Jose initiating the shot in the clinch, you know, James did his due diligence in turning him. You know, now James is winning in the area that Jose wanted to work from. You, know, you can't do that. If you're going to initiate the clinch in wrestling, you got to really fight hard to win in those areas.
you know, we heard Jose's corner saying James is just hanging on, but honestly, I disagree. I believe Jose is the one who's just hanging on. Yeah, and you see each time James gets the turn, he's typically pretty active as soon as he gets the turn, throwing those body shots, those little knees, still just scoring. Maybe not the most powerful shots, but in the judge's eyes, scoring nonetheless. Yeah, it's better than nothing, which is what we are getting from Jose. And again, like, no offense, but you just got to be more active. Yeah, he seems complacent. He's kind of giving up the position here. A little break up. That was a good break up. Yeah. See, that was, that was a good separation. Looks not like the referee happening. said, okay, not a lot happening. He did give a little warning there to the reinforced knee there. I think it was not intentionally going for the head there, just kind of slid. But right back to the same position, though. See, like right there, uh, you know, Jose just closed the distance. You know, he's got no underhooks. You know, he's got the one underhook, but it was like he shot with no intention to finish a takedown. I think to mitigate the potential striking range, which I understand, but. Yeah, either you're all the way in or you're all the way out type of scenario. He's definitely chosen the all the way in yeah and like and I know this well because when I fight I like to be all the way out I like to maintain my range and move and and, and, and you know use the jab and the cross it's called getting on your bike yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds left here in this third round of the fight we're gonna need to see something drastic and the referee agrees we're gonna need to see something here <laughs> I like this ref yeah this ref is communicating with the fighters letting them know necessary things as he's breaking the action so always good to understand what's happening in there 10 seconds left. All right. We are going to find ourselves going to a referee's decision here. This is another close one. Yeah, I think just due to the activity against the cage right there, there was a lot of uh, potential for the takedown. Damage could have been scored a lot more from Jose there, but it, especially in that third round, he, he seemed very much complacent with the position and just kind of seemed to accept with his, his back against the cage there. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a 30-27 James, uh, but he's, that, that finish has still eluded him. And again, yeah. you know, Jose, he, he, he didn't really do bad, but he didn't do good, you know what I mean? Like, he, he didn't do much. So I'm, not, I'm still not too sure what you expect. You know, he was 2-0 coming into this fight. I, I'd like to see him fight again. Just to see, you know, kind of what he brings to this Fury Amateur Featherweight table, because it is a pretty pretty stacked roster. Yeah, you'd love to see the lighter divisions just so stacked, so packed, so many bantamweights and featherweights, even into the lightweight division. You know, there's so many of these fighters. Looks like Wayne has got our official decision. We'll take it inside to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision, brought to you by Space City Collective. With scores of 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28, your winner by unanimous decision, Brian the Hitman James! Well, as we suspected there doing a little bit more just doing enough particularly in the later round there to pick up the uh the judge's decision there yeah he's 4-0 Ali Mon is our champion also 4-0 maybe we'll see him fight for the title <laughs>